Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming this morning. Sorry for the slight delay. Um, I've spoken with many of you via email, if not in person by now, but in case we haven't met, my name is Lauren Bose and I handle the public relations for Falcons Creative Group. And I am so honored to be able to introduce you all to our guest panelists here. Uh, as you all know, Falcons Creative Group has been helping Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex with the development of their newest attraction, Heroes and Legends, featuring the U.S. Astronaut Hall of Fame. And I'm joined today by Cecil McCurry, who is the President and Chief Creative Officer of Falcons Creative Group. And of course, the legendary Mr. John McBride, who we're all thrilled could be here today. And finally, Theron Protzi, who is the Chief Operating Officer at Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. So we're gonna start with a brief kind of introductory sentence from Cecil and then move on to Theron and then we will move into a quick Q&A session. Uh, following the Q&A, we are going to have a ribbon cutting. So please stick around for that, plenty of photo opportunities. If you have not done so already, we are also offering complimentary shuttle service to the complex tomorrow to see the attraction. You can sign up over there at the laptop at the front and I'll give you all the details afterwards. Final note, if you RSVP'd via email, I will send you press materials after this event. If you did not, find me, give me your contact information, and I'll send them anyways. All right, without further ado, here's Cecil. Thank you very much, Lauren. Well, I'm so excited to be here. This has been an incredible journey for us. From Falcons Creative Group, all of us, we are so thankful to Theron and Delaware North and NASA to allow us to participate in creating something so important about American history and be able to kind of express the importance of heroes and how it inspires us and even the youth today. So that was one of the mandates uh, as we were chosen to be the design firm to create this amazing experience that uh, it was something that inspires the youth moving forward. And I think that was a big, big component that allowed us to participate is because we understood how to tell that story and make it inspirational. So. The journey for this experience is starts off with inspirational architectural element that's sweeping uh, from the time period of these early astronauts. And ultimately, you slingshot through the rocket garden up onto the second level where you're engaged with a 360 Act One theater. And there you start to see testimonials of all walks of life talking about who heroes are to them and culminating with the American heroes and astronauts. And ultimately, you, you progress inspired moving forward into Act Two, which is a very, very unique experience from both a technical experience as well as a unique approach of how we're telling a story by allowing you to be the astronaut. We're actually having you look through the eyes of the astronaut. And only a few astronauts are out there to be able to experience that. So what we wanted to do is have all guests be able to experience that for themselves. And so ultimately, you are engaged with a 230 degree large dome screen that is actually below your feet. So you're looking down on Earth. It's an amazing experience from a technical standpoint. It's high resolution, close to over 6K resolution. So it's photo real and it's 3D. So it was a significant task to create that experience. But ultimately, the goal was to tell the story and the journeys that these astronauts went through. And then ultimately, you progress through Act 3. And I want to hand it off to Theron to kind of talk through some of the dynamics of their goals that they, they had instilled in us to execute. Thank you, Cecil. Yeah, Cecil hit the nail on the head. Uh, they were selected, and it's been a great collaborative uh, effort uh, to make this attraction what it is today. And I think the, the importance of it is, is to take away the museum experience. Um, we really tout ourselves to inspire minds through a memorable space experience. So the real key goal why Falcon Treehouse was selected, they make the artifacts come alive. So not only the stories that Cecil just walked you through and the experience that you have, you know, the one thing about Act One that I love that was great by Falcon Treehouse was bringing people actually off the street, interacting with astronauts, but also telling their stories of who their hero is. So we have folks that were interviewed, and they're in that story telling of who really impacted their lives. So you get that emotional connection with the guest. And then, as you go to Act Two, just wow. You know, and the 3D experiences, I mean, I'm ducking every time the ISS comes over my head. 
you know, and then they added the wind and their, their scent that goes along with that experience that just really immerses you in the entire uh, just overall theater. And I hate to even call it a theater because I really do call it an experience. And then you walk out and then you know that you see the artifacts. First of all, you're face to face with an actual rocket and a flight flown capsule. And that's right on the mezzanine level and you're overlooking that and the entire area below. And then you walk down and instead of having a panoramic museum kind of look, we took a different approach and created pods and created pods based off true attributes of what it takes to become a hero. This guy's standing, you know, sitting right behind me here. So, you know, and then you go into these pods based on those attributes, and then you get to hear the stories. I can't remember how many countless hours of interviews with actual astronauts that were um, that Falcon Treehouse. Over six hours. Over six hours of actual interviews. But basically then what happens is you get to see that artifact come alive in the pod as, this, as the astronaut is telling their story as it relates to that artifact. So instead of just reading a plaque, now you're able to hear the personal story behind that. The original MCC of the Mercury, uh, all the consoles, the actual consoles are in place and there's a story of the actual Fr Friendship 7 mission. And then you walk over to the Gemini 9 capsule, flight flown, and projected map on the actual capsule and in a holographic presentation, you get to hear from Gene Cernan, from Tom Stafford, their stories of what happened on that mission. And then you get to walk around that artifact and actually see it up close. So again, you get, to, you get the personalized story of every artifact in there. And then lastly, but not, certainly not least, is the Astronaut Hall of Fame. Once six miles away, very, it wasn't attended that well by our guests. Kennedy's a full day experience. So they, they, that, tick, that was part of their ticket included, but they just end up usually just going right by it. So we really wanted to give the respect and honor, honor it deserved, brought it, put it part of Heroes and Legends, and now you walk through an amazing display and learning about the astronauts in a very interactive uh, kiosk that has an interactive cylinder. You can take photo ops with some astronauts right on the cylinder, take some really cool looking selfies, and they do come out really good, by the way. But then you get to learn about anything you want about the astronauts, or they let us know, you know. But the, 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 you see videos, you see pictures, as it relates to all the astronauts that are inducted into the Hall of Fame. A completely immersive experience. And then you walk out onto the rocket garden, right after you just were lifted, elevated up through the ramp. Now you can walk up and get up close you can to actual rockets. That, to me, brings that space experience together. So instead of just looking at artifacts, now you're looking at the stories that are tied to each artifact. And Falcon Treehouse did an amazing job bringing that all together. They were just so collaborative, partnership. You know, there was some yelling back and forth. There was some transparency. But at the end of the day, we had one mission in mind, and we hit it and hit, the, uh, hit it right out of the park. So, Cecil, thank you so much to you and your team because you did an amazing job. So thank you. Please, John. First of all, let me tell you what a pleasure it is to be here with you this morning here in Orlando, Diapa. Been here to two or three. I think this is the largest one I've ever seen. I'm probably one of the world's luckiest guys. Number one, to be born in the great state of West Virginia. Number two, number two, to spend about 14 years in the United States Navy flying jets on and off of aircraft carriers and test pilot. I did that 600 times. The beautiful part is my landings match my takeoffs. That's a great thing when you're a Navy guy. But at the end of my career there at the Navy, I got to go to Air Force Test Pilot School. And all these things kind of combined and came together and allowed me to join NASA in the very first class of space shuttle astronauts. So I was really, I guess you could say, a blessed individual. I'm even more blessed today to be able to go to work with Theron and Andrea and Lisa and Rebecca each and every day. If you haven't been to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, you are not living. <laughs> you got to fulfill the whole dream of your life by coming and seeing us, particularly with this Heroes and Legends. Uh, we, of those six hours of astronaut interviews, I think I was on the back side of the camera for most of them, if not more. I think we had more than six hours. We had three hours with Tom Stafford one day, so I think we got close to 10 or 20 hours maybe. But it was a wonderful pleasure for me to be involved with the, the base work and the groundwork and helping uh, to usher this thing to its full adulthood. And I'm really a pleasure to be with you, Theron, today and all the great folks on of the Kennedy Space Center Visitor, Visitor Complex. So spread the word. Once you see that Visitor's Complex, you'll never go, you'll never feel the same the rest of your life. And that's, this is a great thing today. We're gonna do more things, hopefully with Falcon. So come on out and see us, visit us, pass the word, and 
have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, All right, we're going to move on to the uh, ribbon cutting ceremony. And I will get out of the shot. Okay, we're going to open the floor to some Q&As very quickly. We have any additional? Go ahead. Joe? In terms of the, uh, the Hall of Fame being integrated in, were there any concepts that you took from the original Hall of Fame, or did you rethink it from scratch? Sure, I'll take that. Yeah, we, we, we met with all the astronauts, and one of the things, the key aspects that we took from the Astronaut Hall of Fame was to, to utilize, they have just these amazing discs that are kind of engraved, and we took all those original discs and incorporated them to a whole new kiosk and actually presented to the prototypes for the inductees, Scott Berezinski and Brian Duffy this year, to make sure that they were wowed, and they were. So we took that original aspect of it, brought that in, and now we've added all their patches, the years that they were flown, so we really added a whole additional element, but that was part of the original piece that we, we took from the uh, Astronaut Hall of Fame. We haven't made that announcement yet, but uh, it's roughly right around 23 million. So, you know, and that's just after Atlantis was done. So now we have two beautiful ends of the facility. And now all I can tell you now is that the next year, we have these two beautiful attractions. The, the entire middle of the complex will be completely transformed next year with technology that hopefully will blow your mind. So we're utilizing all sorts of new technology um, in creative ways with Paseo Electric Map, you can look that up. Uh, but, you know, making the place look entirely new and different. Uh, so, to have these two beautiful attractions at the ends, and now knowing what's going to happen in the next year, as well as, well as our brand new education center, um, I, the next year is very, very exciting. That would be you, I think. Actually, it was a combination. The RFP that uh, Delaware North and NASA put together really wanted to take the hero's journey. Um, it was implemented throughout the, the RFP itself, and that's something that we take to heart. Uh, it's a storytelling journey that we, we do environmental storytelling. And uh, jo Joseph Campbell was one of the kind of premises that we uh, embraced, which uh, talks about the theory of storytelling. And ultimately, we took that framework and came up with the logic of how to create um, an immersive experience that allowed you to become that astronaut. So it was kind of a hybrid. That was our interpretation of their RFP. Any other questions? Um, one for uh, John. Um, how, how important is this for inspiring the next generation of astronauts, encouraging interest in STEM subjects and things like that? Well, I think the job that the astronauts do in the heroes and legends will do for our future youth or the youth of today and the leaders of tomorrow is to inspire them to go do the things that I got to do. I think if you walk through heroes and legends and spend a, you spend almost a day in there, by the time you walk out you feel like, particularly the youngsters we hope, will get the idea that they too, by setting their mind to it and working very hard over the next several years, can come down and fly spacecraft of the future. Maybe be that first man or woman that walks on Mars, who we think today is somewhere between 8 and 18 years old, so that's kind of we love to talk to the kids about that, and maybe one of these days I'll get to go to the launch of the first man or woman that goes to Mars. I can't think. As I talk to the kids, I tell them to make sure you call me <laughs> and invite me to your launch because I certainly want to be there. Or what, what kind of um, STEM element does the attraction have? Uh, well, you know, I think that's been a common uh, thread throughout the whole process, you know, being sensitive to how all of this the space program was tied to science, technology, you know, and math. Um, I don't think there's a literal uh, line that's defining it, but you, you will see that throughout the whole experience. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take a little bit of that because that is one of our main focuses going moving forward, our new education center, the Paseo 
technology, we're really focusing on STEM, uh, as well as NASA Applied Sciences and how it relates to STEM. So that's really coming focused uh, moving forward. How this attraction hits that is, Cecil hit on it perfectly, is we take the, the pods which show the inspiration, you know, the attributes of becoming a hero. So like Mr. Cabana, four-time shuttle astronaut, he shows his actual science project that he did when he was a little kid and how that really took him to the next level of, of becoming an astronaut and learning more about math and science. So it's not really literal from that respect, but from a storytelling, we want to inspire them to know about education is, is the key focus. And the astronauts talk about it in many times in those, uh, each one of those pods throughout their interviews. Let me say a minute about STEM. That's one of the most important acronyms, I think, in today's society is the fact that we want to train these young people. I was inspired by the early seven guys and John Kennedy, whom I got to meet when he was campaigning for president. So all this stuff stuck in my mind for my whole time in college on my last day. A guy came through and said, any of you guys want to fly for the Navy? I had never been in an airplane. I took the test, got all the answers right, and he took me out immediately and flew me in a Navy training airplane. Kind of changed the course of my life. So it's those kind of people and the people who are talking science, technology, engineering, arts, and math now <laughs> that really inspire the young people to go forward and do good things. So that's what we're all about at the Visitors Complex. I think the youth, I think there and all of us will agree, that's our primary target, to get these young men and women to go off and do some good things. All right. Any other questions? Okay. We're going to have some photo opportunities. Feel free to approach anyone for pictures. And John will be signing autographs, and he has some photos for you as well. Uh, one last reminder, if you want to come to see the attraction tomorrow, the sign-up sheet is at the front. See me or Robert, who should be up there with it right now, and we can help you out. Thanks so much for coming, Thank you guys. You.